So, in our last video, we got introduced to the idea of acids being measured in a logarithmic scale to molar concentration. So, our acid of interest in this video is nitric acid. It's considered a strong acid. That means we assume that all of our nitric acid will disassociate into hydrogen molecules. And so as we increase the strength of this acid by a factor of 10, the pH actual number goes down. This may seem counterintuitive, but this is because we're looking at it as a logarithmic value and actually a negative log value because if we took our log value and uh, of a concentration, we would wind up with negative numbers. And as I was saying in our last video, the whole point of the pH is to do what's called transforming data into a simple, easy to understand scale, in this case of 0 to 14, which is pretty much a, a broad range of acidic settings that most biological systems operate under. We prefer to, for most of life to operate around the neutral pH of water of 7. So, as, so if we have a 1 molar concentration of our nitric acid and we take the negative log of it, our pH is 0. Take a second to, to punch it into your calculator and see how this is the case. As we weaken it by a factor of 10 to 0.1 molar or 1 times 10 to the negative 1, we are at pH 1. Our acid base indicator color begins shifting to away from the red towards the direction across the color wheel of the orange, uh, yellow, a greenish tint, and then a blue. Then as we go to another factor of 10 by diluting, we are, have 0.01 molar concentration. Notice that we've essentially moved the decimal place uh, from one place to the left and now two places to the left. Remember how zeros kind of act as placeholders. So we're now at 1 times 10 to the negative 2 power of acid and that negative log turns it into pH 2. And then we successively weaken by another factor of 10 or another uh, decimal placeholder, 1e negative 3, negative log of 1e negative 3 is pH 3, then we weaken it down by another factor of 10 to pH 4, and then to pH 5. So, once again, this follows pretty much our decimal system of tens, of factors of tens. So what was I doing in the last video? What I was basically doing was forming what was called successive dilutions. And what I was doing with each occasion is I was taking what was the initial molar concentration and taking a certain volume from it to dilute it down to a new molar concentration and a new volume. So what I was doing, I was taking one milliliter from a one molar concentration and that if I were to make put that into a solution that was otherwise diluted down with water to 10 milliliters thus 9 milliliters of water and 1 milliliter of our acid we could as you can tell here we can just simply take this side and divide it by that side and you would see that we were now at a weakened concentration of 0.1 molar. So this is what is called a dilution formula. There's a lot of other names that are for it. But what this does is this helps you take a, a so much of a volume from a certain strength to help perform make, to help make a certain volume of another strength. And so this is a very useful equation when we're doing basic lab chemistry. In a sense, you could say that this first solution that we had was what was called our stock solution. This was the initial concentration that all of these 
successive concentrations were derived from. And so I simply repeated this equation each time, taking one milliliter from the previous concentration, adding it to the next concentration, and diluting it the rest of the way with nine milliliters of, the, of water, and then it was creating a successively weaker molar concentration each time. And in a lot of lab chemistry, you're taking a concentrated stock solution and using this equation to make successive dilutions. In one of the core labs that we do in chemistry called spectrophotometry, we wind up making a series of these dilutions to analyze the strength of an unknown solution. So this dilution formula we'll be using a lot in the rest of this semester. So let's get used to it. We will have a separate video devoted just to this equation, but I thought it would be really cool to introduce it in the context of what we're already doing. So in conclusion, what we were doing in this previous video is that we were doing a series of dilutions to raise the pH value by one, which is diluting the strength of each solution by a factor of 10. And so essentially that was this dilution formula being put into action.